Hello everyone, I'm Karthik and welcome to another Houdini tutorial. Uh, in this video, we are going to go through this Vellum project as you can see on your screen. And uh, uh, this is not going to be a step by step tutorial. Uh, I'll go through the project file as most of the concepts that I've used here have been covered in the previous videos. So let's get started. So here, the first thing that I have done is let me just turn everything off. Uh, we have a geometry notebook. You can name it whatever you want and you can, you can color it whatever you want. Uh, I have called an alembic N. This geometry for the bars I got from uh, polyheaven.com and uh, I'll provide a link in the project file. So I have unpacked it. I have unpacked this and I transferred the path attribute here. I have used a convert node. Uh, as I just want to make sure that everything here is a polygon as you can see and then I have used the attribute rename node to rename the path attribute to name attribute as in Houdini most of the things most of the nodes work fairly well with the name attribute okay I just used a null node and call it out after this I've used a subdivide node because I wanted to give more geometry for our simulation here to this was and this is what we are getting after the subdivide and after that, I have used a group node and this group node is a, a group type pin and uh, it consists of all the points in this geometry and I have called them pins. Okay. After that, what we are going to do is we are going to use a film cloth constraint node. And as I have stated earlier in my previous tutorials also, and if you want to learn this in detail, then you can, then you can see the previous one, especially the second Houdini vellum tutorial second the main objective of the vellum cloth constant is that it gives our mesh or our geometry with two important cloth properties uh, which will help us in vellum simulation and those two properties are the are the stretchiness of the cloth and the bendiness or the foldability of the cloth how stretchy the cloth is going to be and how foldable the cloth is going to be so we can rule the stretchiness of the cloth here in the stretch section with the stiffness if the stiffness value for the stretch stiff for the stretch section is very high, then the cloth is going to be very less stretchy. And if the stiffness is very low, then the cloth is going to be very stretchy. I want this cloth to be not so stretchy, so I kept this at 1e plus 8, which is quite high. After that, I'll come to the bend section. And uh, the bend section, as I stated, uh, the bend section controls how bendy or how foldable the cloth is going to be so you can control that with the help of the bend stiffness here the higher the bend the higher the bend stiffness the less bendy it is going to be and the lower the stretch stiffness it is going to be more bendy and more foldable i want this uh cloth sim to be quite bendy so i kept the stiffness here for the bend section to 0 0.0001 uh, which is quite low okay after this, what I have done is I've used a vellum constraint node. I've used a vellum constraint node and I've changed the constant type. I changed the constant type to pin to target. I also changed the group type to points and we are applying this vellum constraint, this pin to target constraint to specifically the group called pins, which consists of all the geometry of this bus, as you can see. These are all our pins and our vellum constant pin to target constant is only going to be applied to all these points. So in vellum pin to target constant, come to pin to animation, I'll change the pin type to soft. Okay. And uh, in the pin to target constant, the stretch stiffness and the bend stiffness behaves as a switch. Okay. So higher the stiffness means if the stiffness is very high, then the object is going to respect its original transformation its original position uh, its original transformation values and it will not take participation in the film simulation if the stiffness is very low that is if it goes to 1e minus 10 that is somewhat very low uh, then it totally takes participation in the film simulation and ignores completely the original position or original transformation okay and similarly with the bend stiffness also if the stiffness value for the bend stiffness in pin to target constant is very high then it means that uh, 
it will not take participation in the valence simulation it will respect its original transformation and if the value is very low then it will take participation in the simulation and the original transformation or position won't matter that much okay so i kept the stiffness here for the stiff stretch stiffness to 0 0.00, 0.001, 0.001 which is quite low and this basically means that we want this uh, mesh to take participation in the simulation but also somewhat hold its original transformation okay and in the bench stiffness also the same values uh, which means the same when we use the vellum solver after this you can see that in the forces i have turned off the gravity completely and if you and if you now dive inside the vellum solver you'll see that there's a vellum constraint property so what is vellum constraint property and why is it here inside as you can see in the preview the vase is moving smoothly and then suddenly it turns into a cloth but also holds somewhat the shape of the vase okay so what is happening here is that I have used a attribute what I have used as a mask attribute and with the help of the mask attribute I am deriving the cloth properties in the simulation okay so I'm using the mask attribute as a switch as well and we are using that mask attribute to not only control the vellum properties but also control the materials here so if the value of the mask is zero then the material is going to be vast then this is going to stay vast and if the mask value turns to one then that this turns into a cloth okay and the material also so and the material also changes so after the subdivide what i have done is i have used another branch here i have created another branch and in this branch i have used a attribute triangle okay and here i have created a mask attribute uh, with the help of some vex vex code so the first thing that I'm doing here is I'm creating a vector called mask and this mask vector is equal to the relative point B box uh, for this geometry with respect to the position. So what this relative P point B box does is it generates a value for all the points here. So we have a point here, okay, for all these points. It is going to generate a value which is going to be in relation with the bounding box of this mesh okay so what basically it does is at zero here at the world center here here at the bottom it is going to provide a value to the points which is going to be equivalent to zero and as the y size progresses as the mesh progresses towards the positive y direction uh, that value is going to be one at this step here okay so the mask the mask variable the mask vector here uh, for the y direction is going to run from 0 to 1 okay it is going to be 0 here and it is going to be 1 here after that what i have done is i created a float called masky i just written mask and added a y so it has become masky and this masky is going to be equivalent to the y vector of this variable called mask okay so this is something that I've just done. Uh, you can name it whatever you want, whatever you want. So after the relative point B box, I created a float called masky, which is equivalent to the y to, of the mask attribute or mask variable. And what I've done here is I, I have added a offset to this masky. Okay, as I said, this points are going to have a value from zero to one. Okay, but what I have done here is I have added an offset here. Okay, and this offset, this offset is going to run from the range minus one to one. Okay, so initially, if you create an offset, if you create a channel float called offset, and if you just turn this on, you'll get a offset which is which will be running from zero to one. But what I've done is I have come to the edit parameter interface. I come to offset. And I change the range from minus one to one. So now when I'm adding that offset, when I add minus one to all these points, it becomes here. Uh, when you add minus one to zero, it becomes minus one. And when you add minus one to one, it becomes zero. So now this value for the float mask key 
is going to run from minus 1 to 0 okay and uh, as the animation progresses I have animated this offset from minus 1 to 1 and at the end here when we are adding the offset 1 the mask key attribute comes from 1 to 2 okay so basically we are running the values from minus 1 to 2 when the offset is 2 when the offset is minus 1 then the minimum value is going to be minus 1 and when the offset is 1 then the maximum value is going to be 2 okay then after that we have clamped the value uh, from 0 to 1 and uh, when I equate that mask key to an attribute called mask and if I visualize that mask you can see we change the visualization to color okay so this is running from 0 to 1 and if I visualize this mask attribute you can see initially the mask value is going to be 0 and then as the simulation progresses as the animation progresses here the animation progresses it turns into 1 okay after that um, as you can see initially the mask value here is running from 0 to 1 but this is pretty smooth okay the ramp here is pretty smooth what I want is I want this ramp to be very very sharp so I want this mask attribute to be very sharp so that's why I've used the attribute remap here and what I've done here is I have used the original attribute name called mask I have renamed it mask and here first thing that I've done is I made it very sharp like this so now when we run the animation okay not only have I made it very sharp I have also changed the output minimum and output maximum to 1 and 1.5 so we are remapping these values from 0 to 1 for the mask to 1 and 1.5 the minimum value is going to be 1 and the maximum value is going to be 1.5 so to visualize this mask now I have to change the values here 1 and 1.5 now uh, now that I have changed the output minimum and output maximum and I made it sharp now when I visualize this you can see this is what we are getting this mask attribute now is pretty sharp so this is initially going to be a vas uh, it's going to be a static geometry and when the mask passes through this all of this all of this white area is going to become cloth okay and it is also going to change the material so eventually it all becomes cloth like this okay so now we have our mask attribute and what we are going to do is we are going to use this mask attribute we'll call this in our vellum simulation and we will use this mask attribute to manipulate our vellum cloth okay and what we are manipulating in vellum cloth is the rest length scale okay so as i said in the stretch stiffness and the bend stiffness these are providing the cloth with two important properties which is the stretchability of the cloth and the bendability or foldability of the cloth we control how much stretchy or how much bendy it is going to be with the help of the stiffness values okay the rest length scale here for the stretch stiffness controls the distance between the points okay so we have two points here and this wrestling scale what it does is it controls the distance between these two points so if the wrestling scale is one then the distance is going to be the original distance between these points and if I increase the wrestling scale to something 1.1 or 1.2 or 1.3 then the distance between these points is going to increase by that amount okay so so the cloth will behave differently then okay we are going to use so what we are basically doing is we are going to use this mask attribute to control the rest length scale of this vellum cloth now you must be thinking that why don't we just use this uh, parameter here and we can animate this but this is not going to work in vellum simulation on SOP level because if you want to control the wrestling scale, maybe if you want to animate